Hello and welcome to Inside Edition, where we discuss national, regional and international issues in depth. Since its inception in 1981, Bahrain Institute of Banking and Finance has been a leading educational provider across all major business disciplines. It plays a vital role in the training and development of human capital in the Middle East and North Africa. The BIBF has made its mark internationally with clients in Asia, Africa, Europe, USA and the Middle East, well on its way to becoming the global institute of choice. For no, to know more information about the Institute's role and achievements, we are pleased to be joined here at the studio by the Head of Marketing and Corporate Communications at Bahrain Institute of Banking and Finance, Ms. Amal Sulani. Welcome back. Joining me in the studio is the Head of Marketing and Corporate Communications at Bahrain Institute of Banking and Finance, Ms. Amal Sulani. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for having us and thank you for this opportunity. Yes. Um, we're very happy to be uh, in Bahrain uh, TV, Bahrain International. Uh, and uh, we're very happy to be uh, with you to discuss more about the BIBF. We're actually, um, um, th when we were trying to get um, the questions together for um, uh, this show, um, BIBF has so many the nooks and crannies that you can ask questions about and do shows about. And um, I think we, we came to a uh, consensus that this is a good place to start. And I'm so glad that you took some time to answer these questions because the BIBF, as we talked a little bit behind um, the scenes, is an institution that is part of Bahrain's educational, um, let's say, field. And um, even its achievements, BIBF over the years has proven itself uh, not just by the education it provides, but also by the cooperation it has with international institutions and with local institutions graduates of BIBF are world-renowned um, uh, people that uh, our alumni are basically known um, uh, for the strength of their um, capabilities what can you tell us and our viewers um, and give us a little brief idea about BIBF's establishment um, its vision as well as its mission thank you so much um, first of all uh, the Bahrain Institute of Banking and Finance uh, is a training institute affiliated with the Central Bank of Bahrain mm -hmm. uh, having been established in 1981 it, it plays a vital role in the training and development of the human capital in Bahrain and in the region as yes. well uh, as uh, and beyond even the region yeah. um, so for the last 40 years the BIBF has been uh, a key uh, institute in providing training and development programs in addition to academic uh, programs mm -hmm. that have enriched the uh, Bahraini landscape with uh, people or alumni that are uh, that have the skills and capabilities to take uh, hold of the uh, uh, private sector right. and even the public sector right. and uh, lead in in these areas yes. um, as an institute um, we have a vision to be the institute of choice for the development of business professionals okay. and it's been uh, a vision that we've been working on for a long time uh, we are very proud to be providing quality education yeah. uh, we provide thought leadership and value mm -hmm. through the programs that we offer uh, most of our programs are career linked mm -hmm. so they are always uh, there we have a lot of employees who come and right. train with us at the BIBF in addition to uh, our bachelor degrees of course yes, so yes. school leavers who finish school and come uh, over to join the university that we have yeah. um, we also have a comprehensive range of professional development programs mm -hmm. uh, that are like international qualifications such right. as the ACCA, the CFA, the CMA, mm -hmm. everything that's finance related. Um, uh, and most of them have a lifelong uh, professional impact uh, on our learners. Um, of course, the BIBF is very well known for its global alliances and the strategic yeah. partnerships that we have. Um, <coughs> we provide... Um, uh, a, a structure of cross-border education mm -hmm. which was started back f uh, around 20 or 22 years ago wow. uh, and uh, many uh, of the institutions or organizations now in Bahrain have adapted the same sort of structure of course, yes. so um, uh, the BIBF was uh, in the, yani the first uh, institution to uh, to uh, provide that sort of structure the cross-border education right uh, so, of course, uh, we are always trying to ensure uh, a stimulating environment for our learners. Yeah. We always try to uh, provide them with high caliber faculty. Uh, we have practitioners and staff that are very well trained and are also uh, experts in their own fields and they have a talent to train. Yeah. 
um, uh, the innovative delivery that we uh, provide also also provides cutting edge uh, uh, infrastructure for mm -hmm. training and development uh, within uh, within locally and in, uh, regionally and internationally. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, we also try to maximize our contribution in strengthening Bahrain's uh, position as a regional financial hub. Right. We always try uh, when whenever you have a financial uh, hub, you need a backup uh, institute that provides training, right. and that is exactly what the BIVF is trying to do. That's amazing. I mean, um, uh, Bahrain to a lot of the people that know Bahrain. And uh, for the people that want to come to Bahrain, if Bahrain is a financial hub. It's actually a business hub of the region, um, uh, whether it's for the geographical location or whether it is because of the open institutions on the island itself or even its uh, close proximity to the GCC uh, countries. Bahrain has always been that center point of um, uh, where business can be done and they have very open plans when it comes to uh, business protocols and so on. Um, in order to understand more about how BIBF um, sets its standards in education, we first want to know what are the programs that BIBF does offer. Um, uh, we, we, uh, the BIBF, uh, having been established uh, 40 years ago, provides three types, three main types of programs, mm -hmm. let's say. Um, uh, our academic degrees that are usually from international universities. Yeah. We have the professional qualifications that are international certifications. And we have the short training courses. So mm -hmm. three types of uh, programs that right. we have. The academic degrees are based on the cross-border education with global partners, of course. We've got the undergraduate uh, um, degree from Bangor University mm -hmm. and the London School of Economics, right. University of London. And we've got the postgraduate uh, degrees, which are the master's degrees, mm -hmm. from Strathclyde Business School, which is from Scotland in the UK. And we have the DePaul University uh, okay. program as well from Chicago mm -hmm. in the USA. Um, uh, basically, the BIBF has uh, a six center structure. So we've got banking and finance, Islamic finance, uh, we've got accounting programs, mm -hmm. we've got insurance, digital transformation and project management, uh, in addition to leadership and management, and the academic uh, arm as well yes. of the BIBF. Um, every year we offer more than 600 courses. Beautiful. So these are all uh, 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 market-led courses that are provided uh, 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 as a as a as a rea reaction to what the uh, market needs. Okay. Uh, the BIBF students, um, uh, we're very proud of them. Uh, all our alumni, we're very proud because we continue. They continue to exceed uh, global benchmarks. Right. Uh, so many of the qualifications that we have. Uh, the the pass rates are higher than international pass rates. Yes. So that is also a reflection of the the care and the uh, the the way that we provide the training for right. the for the students. Yeah. Um, and we always see that as uh, a, a success. Mm -hmm. uh, our their success is our success, right. basically. Absolutely. Uh, we also have the faculty. Uh, like I said, the fa our faculty comprise of market practitioners. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have academics and qualified senior industry professionals. Uh, they all have diverse backgrounds. Uh, they ensure an enriched participant experience, right. of course. And we're always uh, trying to strike the perfect balance between theory and practice. Right. When it comes to, to the programs uh, that you talk about, and even, I mean, the, um, uh, the staff members, the faculty members, you did mention the fact that you guys also offer certain licenses within the financial sectors. How do these two merge into each other in order to produce um, um, the best possible outcome for your students? Um, uh, this, is, this is where uh, the BIBF students get their edge. Yeah. So basically they do have a, a, an academic uh, uh, education, mm -hmm. an academic proper education, right. uh, but at the same time they are exposed to professional qualifications, they are exposed to webinars, seminars, mm -hmm. uh, professional talks, industry uh, uh, experts all around. Yeah. So that's what uh, keeps them uh, uh, unique in the market. Uh, they are very uh, in big demand. Uh, our students are in very good demand yes, uh, in the are. market. And uh, because of this exposure, so they've got the academic uh, background, they've also got the professional side 
of things, the practical implementation side of uh, uh, the information that they require, all within the specialized, uh, specialized skills that are required for practical implementation of their roles. So basically they graduate with everything that they need in their hand. Exactly. They, they become uh, uh, assets to the organizations that they join rather than liabilities. Perfect, perfect. Um, one thing towards what most institutions um, or what most institutions are integrating within their systems is uh, the economic um, uh, vision uh, 2030 uh, for the sustainable development goals of um, uh, Bahrain specifically, not just the economical one, but also the um, national SDGs. How does the BIBF contribute to achieve these national SDGs, national 2030 SDGs? Um, since the uh, uh, announcement of the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals, mm -hmm. um, uh, Bahrain has been a, a shining example of following the UN's SDGs yeah. in order to uh, achieve uh, a, a better and more sustainable future for, for all in the kingdom. Yeah. Um, based on this, uh, we've s we, we have realized the importance of SDGs. And uh, uh, recently, we've launched the Sustainable Development Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, and this academy offers programs uh, that, are, uh, that train professionals on how to attain sustainability within right. their organizations. Right. Uh, of course, the objectives of this uh, academy is to provide sustainable development awareness, mm -hmm. uh, to provide programs that develop the human capital's competencies in sustainability itself, yeah. and we also offer uh, sustainable transformation advisory services. Mm. Uh, we've partnered with the London Institute of Banking and Finance and Fitch Learning, yeah. Uh, and these two global uh, institutes also help us to bring specialized skills and uh, training programs that will ensure that the uh, sustainable development goals are provided uh, for our human capital and to, uh, to uh, prepare our uh, workforce for uh, implementation of sustainable development. Yeah. Well, um, in performing its uh, duties, the BIBF collaborated with a lot of local and international institutions. You mentioned some of them. Um, what can you tell us, why is it so important and how is it important um, uh, and what are the outcomes of these kinds of cooperations? How does it contribute positively to achieve the goals that you have set for yourself and maybe your students as well? Um, yes, the, uh, like I said, the BIBF works on a cross-border education. Mm. So basically uh, it is an incubator for uh, international universities such as Bangor University and the London School of Economics right. that provide uh, uh, education and academic education in banking and finance and accounting and finance. Right. So, um, uh, so the BIBF acts as an incubator basically mm -hmm. for these programs. So you, uh, students don't have to go abroad to study. They get international uh, degrees from the comfort of their homes. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, the uh, uh, international universities uh, uh, that, are, that we provide, this is in addition to the professional qualifications that we have, also the ACCA, the CFA, uh, even uh, uh, AWS programs that we have okay. as well, Amazon Web, Web Services S as well, we, we offer those programs. Uh, and we, we basically try to provide uh, learners with training opportunities uh, from, from within the kingdom. Yeah. When it comes to um, a, a very important factor, not just um, now, in the past has always been the standard of education, the accreditation of education. Um, uh, what is the pathway that a student after it graduates can take in the future? Um, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, standards that a BIBF puts in order to uh, make this educational field more attractive to the students and for them to choose this field and have more opportunities in the future after they graduate? Um, yes, definitely. The BIBF um, holds quality as one of the major pillars. Uh, the fundamental pillar of uh, BIBF is quality. Yeah. Uh, as as uh, um, a semi-government training institute, we are not uh, a private institute, mm -hmm. so we're not looking for profits. Uh, what we uh, any any profit that we generate, we re-inject into the quality of our program. Right. So quality is. Uh, a major uh, principle of our programs. Mm. Um, we, what we usually uh, focus on is how to, to uh, train 
the the uh, our learners uh, based on quality. Right. So there there is no compromise for quality at the BIBF programs. Uh, all of the programs are uh, up to uh, high, uh, yani high level standards. Yes. Um, we we follow best practices, international best practices, and we make sure that the faculty that deliver these programs are experts in their fields and have a passion to train. Yes, that's amazing. Um, this year has not been an easy year for anybody uh, in any kind of field, but I, I think especially the educational field was um, hit the hardest as well as they were really uh, under pressure to, to show some kind of a change. So the current health circumstances contributed to the implementation of online education in all kinds of uh, learning institutions. What can you tell us about the BIBF's experience? How did they change? How easy or hard was it? And what is your future plan when it comes to this online education portal? Uh, definitely last year and this year were challenging mm. in, in many ways. Uh, like you said, uh, uh, it wasn't easy for anyone, but uh, we tried to see it positively. We tried to see these challenges as uh, an opportunity, uh, a window of opportunity for people who are in lockdown or staying at home right. uh, to, to train. It's, it's a perfect time for training. Mm. Uh, and uh, what we are most proud of is that not a single day of training was lost. Uh, during the, these times, during since the start of the pandemic. Um, uh, and in this reg regard, I would like uh, to take a moment to thank the National Task Force for combating uh, of COVID-19 in Bahrain, led by the Bahrain team. Uh, they've shown comprehensive plans. They've yeah. shown very successful um, uh, implementation of all of their uh, uh, programs that they've uh, put in place to make Bahrain uh, a safe environment for all. And we really uh, have to take a moment to thank them. Yes. Uh, based on that, uh, alhamdulillah, within one week of, of uh, the announcement of the pandemic, uh, we transferred all of our physical uh, classes to online yeah. uh, classes. And we were able to design an in-house uh, online learning platform called My Class 3.0, mm -hmm. uh, done by our IT team. Wonderful. And uh, uh, you could just log in and explore the programs. Uh, and uh, attend your programs. So it's got all of the, uh, the factors of a proper class. Yeah. So you've got the attendance, the whiteboard, the classrooms, the questions and answers, quizzes, um, your notes. Uh, yeah. it, 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 it's basically a reflection of your physical classroom. That's beautiful. Um, BIBF also leveled up to BIBF Plus mm. during the pandemic. We were ready before the pandemic, but this of course s uh, speeded uh, things up a yes. little bit. Uh, we offer distance learning, online learning, and even a digital library okay. where all where you can find online courses and study from them uh, within uh, you know, within your uh, the comfort of your home uh, and keeping everybody safe. Of course, is the topmost priority. Uh, from your experience, I mean, you've seen the before and the after. Do you feel um, people have gotten used to the online training and it will be difficult to go back to physical? Or do you feel that a mix of both will be the factors for future education? I, yes, I think uh, now that uh, everyone has experienced online learning, mm. I think blended learning is here to stay. Yeah. Um, even inshallah after the pandemic, uh, blended learning will be uh, the way to go for most uh, uh, educational institutions. Um, I think it's uh, it's been a, a very effective alternative to physical uh, education, and I think uh, uh, it actually saved us. Uh, online learning was uh, an excellent uh, um, uh, platform to to go on to. Um, basically, we would have wasted a lot of time yeah. uh, if we hadn't had the online learning. Right. Um, uh, my class 3.0 uh, from the BIBF also. Uh, accelerated that sort of implementation mm -mm. as per the need at that time uh, and th and the circumstances. Uh, blended learning will be will definitely definitely be a successful model for future learning. I believe so too, and I believe that um, Bahrain was already. Uh, in the process of digitalizing a lot of um, uh, things. I mean, we see all of the e-services that were available even before the pandemic. Yes. And after the pandemic, they were just accelerated, exactly. but there was already a plan for them exactly. to be out. So definitely um, a service, a digital services, div digital um, uh, kind of education will be a big part of the future of any institutions in Bahrain. Um, how do you see the future of the educational institutions 
um, after the pandemic, but let's put it not just from like the educational perspective, but also um, the graduates, um, the types of jobs they will have, the types of um, uh, programs maybe BIVF will be ha will be introducing due to the pandemic or due to the circumstances of the world after the pandemic. Uh, definitely a lot of digitalization will uh, is happening already mm -hmm. and has been happening even before the pandemic. Um, uh, at the BIBF, we always try to uh, uh, يعني, uh, provide programs that are market-led. Yeah. So uh, whenever we have uh, programs, we always think of the future. Yeah. We always think of how the students will benefit and how the students will be able to use the skills and uh, knowledge that they are gaining uh, in their time at the BIBF in their future jobs. Yeah. So future jobs and uh, market-led uh, dynamics is always at the top of our heads when we design the programs and when we uh, produce the, the different materials that mm -hmm. we use yeah. uh, for the different programs. And uh, I believe um, um, a lot of things are going to change after the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, definitely a lot of people are looking at um, uh, different ways of to, uh, to do business, for example. Yeah. Uh, many things are going to change. And I think um, uh, we, we as an educational institute, as a professional vocational training institute, mm -hmm. we also have to uh, follow market uh, dynamics, market uh, requirements. Uh, we need to also, we, we continuously do that. We, we always try to um, uh, find out what the market needs right. and provide training programs uh, to reflect that. Yeah. Well, uh, before I go on uh, to our phono, one of the things, I mean, I've had several um, heads of educational institutions or even heads within educational institutions come on the show. We had uh, Dr. Sheikh Khalifa bin Khalifa on the show. And one of the things that we talked about with, uh, with them was um, the problems they faced in the beginning of the online digital learning uh, kind of escapade. And um, there were problems that were foreseen, like for instance, the pressure on the bandwidth, uh, no internet, uh, bad internet quality and so on. Um, but there are also pro problems that were not foreseen. For instance, the compatibility between certain programs and uh, the people's computers, students' computers at home. How did you deal with these problems that you have faced? Um, we have a very dynamic IT team <laughs> and alhamdulillah we were able to um, uh, yani overcome all of these problems mm. in terms of uh, uh, whether it was the bandwidth, the Wi-Fi, uh, everything was um, uh, smooth sailing alhamdulillah from, from the beginning. Uh, especially because it was designed in house, yes, and that's the maybe that was uh, the reason for uh, we did not go through compatibility issues. Mm. Uh, the Wi-Fi is very strong at the in BIBF, Bahrain, yeah. and many of the uh, uh, faculty were coming over to the classes, to the physical classes, to provide the online learning uh, classes uh, to make sure that the setting is professional, to make sure that there is no uh, interruption with the, with the bandwidth or no interruption with the online uh, connections. That's, that's uh, beautiful. I mean, that's one of the things that I want to really uh, focus on, the fact that the BIBF's IT team are the ones who designed their educational program. Um, one of the BIBF's team members is uh, with us over the fo fo phone to explain more about the academic programs. We are joined on the phone by the Assistant Manager of Academic Studies at the BIBF, Ms. Noor Al-Zikri. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Ms. Noor, can you please tell us more about the academic programs that are offered by the BIBF and the cross-border education system for students? We heard a little bit, but we want more in-depth information. Um, so to begin with, um, the BIBF was uh, initially established, it was established in 1981 with the main aim of training the bankers in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Mm -hmm. That idea has then developed to training the bankers at a much younger level, which is at the undergraduate level. And that is how our academic programs step in. The BIBF bridges the gap for those students who wish to attain an international degree from world-renowned universities in the United Kingdom, whilst remain at the comforts of their homes here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Yeah. So upon graduating high school, students would join our BIBF International Foundation program at first, which is actually recognized by the UK NEREC. This would, uh, in return, open up three possibilities and opportunities mm -hmm. for such students. So um, once they complete the BIBF International Foundation program, they can transfer directly to one of our uh, uh, affiliated universities in the UK 
to complete their uh, to, to which would accept them directly upon completing the foundation mm-hmm. here in Bahrain, or they they can um, they can continue uh, once they f- complete their foundation they can continue uh, with us and join one of our well reputed programs. Uh, which includes the Bangor University program, mm-hmm. which has been running in Bahrain for over 20 years and is ranked the eighth in Europe for its research in the fields of banking and accounting and finance. Mm-hmm. The program offers a bachelor's in banking and finance, a bachelor's in accounting and finance, and a bachelor's in banking and finance with a minor in Islamic finance. Mm-hmm. The students can complete the three years here in Bahrain or opt to complete the final year in Bangor University in the UK, Regardless of whether they choose to complete uh, their degree here or the UK, their certificates will actually be issued from the UK. And um, the other option, the other program that we offer at the BIBF is the uh, LSE program um, under the University of London. Mm -hmm. So upon completing the foundation year, they can join the LSE program, which is one of the most prestigious university programs offered and it would allow them a bachelor's degree in economics and management. Mm. Students complete their studies within three years in the, in, uh, fully in, in the Kingdom of Bahrain, whilst receive a degree from the UK. Mm. Um, so all of the degrees uh, uh, will be attained from the UK and are attested by the Higher Education Council in Bahrain. So it's a win-win for students. Mm. Our graduates are, um, what differentiates our graduates is that they're they're employable with an uh, 86% employability rate. They tend to be qualified and ready for the job market, whether locally or internationally. They tend to be graduates of choice. Um, we, during their studies here in Bahrain, we offer students support preparing for the job market. Mm-hmm. Students are offered free access to major BIBF learning events in line with the market needs, which include uh, including uh, cybersecurity knowledge, digital, digital transformation, and artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. Students would receive knowledge hands-on from the d- industry and learn applied sciences in addition to theoretical knowledge. As we offer students an embedded dealing room course, which is a financial simulator that is offered in the king- that we're the only university o- that offers this facility in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Right. So uh, interested students can actually uh, apply online uh, by visiting our website. Thank you so much for answering our (laughs) questions. And we'll definitely put um, the website and the information where people can contact the BIBF on uh, on the line down, uh, down under. And that was the assistant manager of the academic studies at BIBF, Ms. Noor Al Zikri. We will be back right after this. Welcome back. Um, after listening to Ms. Noor and her dedicated, um, uh, her dedication as well as her uh, con- convincing that uh, these programs are really um, some of the top-notch programs offered in the banking sector in Bahrain, I, I truly believe um, that uh, people or students that go to the BIBF do have a bright future. One of the things she mentioned is 1981. That number, just listening to it, you can you can feel how long BIBF has been on the grounds of the island and has really built up the island's banking sector. So after more than 40 years of this dedicated effort, what can you tell us about the BIBF's main achievements in terms of the facts and actual figures? Uh, yes. Uh, um, Something that we are extremely proud of today is the fact that the banking sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain boasts more than 72% Bahrainization mm-hmm. percent in, in terms of percentage of staff. Yeah. Um, um, the reason why the Kingdom has become such a successful financial hub in the region mm-hmm. is due to the fact that Bahrainis are running uh, yeah. the, the financial institutions in the Kingdom. Uh, and we are very proud to be part of that um, uh, of that Bahrainization effort. Yeah. Um, the BIBF has been the backbone of training in uh, the financial services sector, and uh, um, the we have contributed towards uh, increasing the percentage of Bahrainis uh, by providing the training uh, and development programs that have been going on for the past yeah. forty years. <laughs> Um, today, the BIBF uh, provides training in more than 64 countries, wow. uh, a fact that not, not many people know yeah. uh, about. Uh, we are an international institute rather than a local one. Mm-hmm. Uh, we provide uh, training by, sending, by receiving delegations from abroad uh, or by sending our faculty uh, to different countries to yeah. provide training. 
Uh, we compete internationally in the Islamic finance uh, sector, yeah. uh, and we've been uh, requested by major universities and um, major institutions around the world to provide uh, training on Islamic finance. Mm -hmm. uh, so that also positions Bahrain as a as a financial hub for training as well in this field. Right. Um, uh, we're also focusing on uh, emerging technologies mm -hmm. and the digital transformation in all major businesses and disciplines, uh, not only uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the fields of financial um, services sector, but in all sectors, in all business and corporate sectors. Yeah. Uh, we've, uh, just to give you an example, we've introduced a master class about blockchain around mm -hmm. four years ago when nobody even heard of the topic. Yes. So uh, it was a master class to uh, uh, encourage people to find out more about blockchain. Yeah. Um, and we've always tried uh, to uh, be thought leaders in terms of providing uh, knowledge and training programs. Mm. Um, and we try to uh, um, uh, lead in terms of uh, market demand right. rather than uh, being reactive we always try to be proactive in, in this field. Yeah. Um, actually, one of the uh, things uh, that is very important to mention is that the BIBF, um, even with everyday life, has provided some kind of awareness for the normal citizens when it comes to back banking um, issues. Um, I mean, uh, Ms. Noor actually uh, mentioned a little bit about the educational factor about cybersecurity or cyber financing, but also uh, BIBF did some a couple of uh, social media campaigns when it came to uh, proper banking services and um, basically spreading that awareness to the everyday consumer. How do you value the awareness that comes and is it really needed, e especially from an institution or a banking institution, educational institution such as the BIBF? Uh, definitely, um, it's it's extremely important for uh, a, a, a national institute uh, such as the BIBF to be on top of uh, awareness, yeah. uh, to be spreading awareness uh, within the society, mm. uh, especially in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Um, what we uh, what we always try to uh, do is we try to provide uh, information and knowledge yeah. that is accessible to all. Right. Uh, in uh, in response to the pandemic, when mm. the pandemic first started in 2020, we provided around 30 or 40 uh, free public courses yeah. uh, that were online, of mm -hmm. course, and uh, uh, more than 2,000 people benefited from those programs. You can you you were just you just had to register and uh, attend the courses, attend and it, it was in different disciplines, mm. in different um, uh, sectors, mm -hmm. such as insurance, uh, banking, accounting. Uh, even a, a finance, even finance for non-finance wow. um, professionals. So we always try to spread that sort of awareness mm. uh, about the importance of uh, knowledge, importance of uh, training and continuous training to, uh, uh, to improve your skills, to improve your capabilities and to, uh, to make a real difference from your uh, role as a professional. Absolutely. Um, the BIBF has uh, formed a quality assurance department as part of its strategic initiative to manage its growth. Can you tell us more about the importance and the outcomes of that specific approach? Uh, definitely. Quality assurance is a fundamental aspect of any educational mm. system. And uh, at the BIBF, uh, we've, uh, uh, we, we focus a lot on quality. Mm -mm. Um, we strictly adhere to the primary objectives of quality assurance uh, including uh, formulating, maintaining, and enhancing best practices yeah. when it comes to providing training courses. Uh, as an institute of high repute, of course, the BIBF uh, continues to deliver programs uh, that are of high quality and uh, the standards are of international standards. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, that is, that is applicable throughout our centers. Right. Um, uh, we have a QA department, of course, a quality assurance department that makes sure all of these uh, practices are implemented. Right. We work hand in hand with the Higher Education Council of Bahrain uh, uh, from the uh, Ministry of Education as well. Uh, the academic infrastructure of our programs is composed of the four main pillars, which are quality, the quality management system, the frameworks for higher education qualifications, uh, subject benchmark statements and of course pro program specifications right so we make sure quality is on top of everything right so um, before we go to our next question um, how well, who is the the uh, 
the perfect student figure that comes and applies for the BIBF? Who is your future prospective student? Um, uh, what should they have? What should they um, uh, have in terms of beliefs? What do they want to do for the future? Um, can you tell us a little bit about who the BIBF student is? Um, that's a very important question because ideally uh, the, the, the ideal student for the BIBF would be somebody who wants to work in the finance uh, sector, in the corporate sector right. as a whole. Uh, you, want, you always want to have uh, those, those skills. Uh, they are not only skills for the corporate uh, uh, world, they are uh, skills for life. Right. Uh, so if you have finance skills, you'd be able to, uh, to adjust your budget based right. on what, what is available and your resources. Absolutely. So uh, an ideal BIBF student is someone who wants to work in the field mm -hmm. of banking, accounting, finance, Islamic finance. Um, uh, an ideal student would also uh, want to uh, make a change uh, uh, in, the f in, in the corporate world, um, who wants to understand more about sustainable development as well and uh, to uh, understand uh, the basis for a proper organizational uh, professional uh, um, uh, aspect of right. things. Right. Um, our students, uh, like, like I mentioned, our students are uh, v in much demand. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, uh, uh, they are very well taken care of uh, and uh, they are we are very proud of them and their achievements and we see their achievements as our achievements yeah. um, we we uh, they uh, our our alumni enjoy a very high uh, percentage of employability mm -hmm. they are employed internationally uh, because of the international uh, certifications that we offer uh, uh, the BIBF does not offer its own uh, certification because we're not a university yeah. but we offer a cross-border uh, international certification that comes from the mother university, right? From the United Kingdom. That's basically. important to 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 really mention because people th think, okay, they're affiliated. It's not just an affiliation. Exactly. You are actually sponsored by that university here. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the the questions, the uh, quizzes, the examinations, everything is done through the uh, mother uh, university. Yeah. Well. Um, the BIBF um, benefits from new means of social media. We talked a little bit about the awareness aspect of it to communicate with the students and partners. And tell us a bit more about the other aspects of social media when it comes to announcing your new uh, programs or um, anything within the field of social media that BIBF basically utilizes. Uh, yeah, social media is now the place to be. Mm. Everyone is on social media day and night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, uh, as, as, a, as a BIBF, we've also uh, yani, uh, understood the importance of being on social media mm -hmm. or being on channels where the public is. Right. Uh, and uh, that is uh, one of the, uh, uh, the uh, objectives that we have is to uh, spread awareness about the information and the importance of training yeah. uh, and to, uh, of continuous learning, lifelong mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. uh, the BIBF uh, social media is very active. Mm -hmm. We've got a very, very active um, Instagram account, uh, a LinkedIn uh, account as well. Our YouTube channel is uh, extremely uh, um, rich, rich with the information yeah. and the webinars that we have and the seminars that, y that we have. If you want to learn more about a subject, uh, uh, join us on <laughs> our social media channels yeah. and you'll be able to see a lot of programs and mm. uh, information. Um, uh, it's, it's an excellent means of mass communication yeah. basically um, and uh, it is one of the main mediums where we, we announce, we make the announcements for new programs, right. for uh, initiatives that we're uh, offering or announcing to the public. Um, and we also uh, uh, يعني, communicate with our students through social media. Yeah. We get a, lo a lot of inquiries day and night and we're always answering those inquiries through social media. Yeah, that brings actually the student because one of the things that the pandemic did is it put that wedge where the student maybe feels they're far away from the university, they won't get their answers um, uh, answered. Uh, but uh, social media did help with that, especially when you go on uh, Messenger, on Instagram or anything and you immediately ask, usually there's someone at the other end that answers. Um, and when I was doing uh, some of the research for the BIBF, I actually talked to one of um, the alumni of the BIBF and, and he told me about the YouTube uh, channel. He was like, the YouTube channel basically has all of our courses on it, so you don't need to even, everything is there on the YouTube channel. I think that's very useful. 
because whoever wants to search or wants to know something in a specific field, they can always use that as a reference. Exactly. That's perfect. Well, um, before we end uh, today's uh, show, I want to hear from you yourself. What are the future plans and the projects um, that are prepared by the BIBF? Um, the BIBF uh, has recently launched many academies. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're going towards catering to market demands and uh, we're trying to close the training gaps um, wherever, uh, wherever the market requirements are. Mm -hmm. um, some of the uh, academies that we have uh, launched recently are the Digital Transformation Academy, right. uh, the Anti-Money Laundering Academy, mm -hmm. the Tax Academy, Commercial Law Academy, and uh, most recently, the Sustainable Development Academy. Wonderful. Uh, these are all just uh, examples of some of our projects that are extremely successful and that are uh, providing uh, uh, training programs that are catering to specific um, to the specific or the respective uh, disciplines within each one. Perfect. Um, also, um, uh, not to forget one of our uh, very important achievements uh, so far is the new building. Mm -hmm. We have a new building uh, that is uh, under construction. Uh, almost 90% uh, of the building is now uh, completed. Perfect. It's in Bahrain Bay. Beautiful. Uh, and we are uh, uh, very excited to be moving, inshallah, by the end of this year. In the middle of the banking sector. E exactly, yeah. yeah. The, the, the positioning of the building yeah. is also very mm -hmm. uh, iconic. It's mm -hmm. very strategic um, uh, we are uh, in the financial hub of uh, the uh, the capital right. of Manama and um, uh, the new building of course is a state-of-the-art iconic landmark yes. we uh, inshallah with this uh, building we are going to be contributing to the skyline to the Bahrain skyline Beautiful. and um, we are we uh, yani the main aim is to provide an excellent infrastructure for our learners uh, we want them to be happy we want them to be comfortable in the areas where in their classes and um, uh, we want to provide our students with the best learning experience. So they'll be overlooking the sea <laughs> and also having their classes at the same time. So it's going to be a really uh, a relaxing experience, relaxing, <laughs> inspirational. <laughs> and most uh, important is for them to uh, gain the knowledge. Yeah. Well, um, we've come to the end of our show before. Um, I thank you for being with us. Um, a message from you to your prospective students, to your current students and to your alumni. Uh, now at uh, the end of, or let's say, hopefully the end of um, this very difficult um, pandemic circumstances, what do you see um, or what would you like to tell them for their future? Um, to our current students, I'd like to say um, uh, I'm very, very proud of their achievements. Uh, they, they're working really hard, uh, even, even through these tough times. They are online, they are um, always logged in. Mm -hmm. Uh, the attendance is high and we're very happy with their performance. Uh, to prospective students, I say uh, take on the challenge of uh, uh, getting an international degree, join the BIBF, yeah. uh, because it is the way to go, To uh, uh, especially when uh, the, the country is trying to position itself as a financial hub of the region. Right. Um, it is an excellent career opportunity um, for you to be in the banking and the finance sector. Uh, and the accounting uh, fields, yeah. um, and these are skills for life. Yeah. Um, these are not only uh, for a, a specific corporate uh, uh, level uh, uh, job. Yeah. It's basically, uh, if you want to have an international degree uh, from the comfort of your home without the added expenses of going abroad, join the BIBF. Right, definitely. Thank you so much for being with us today and for taking time to answer our questions and shedding the light more on uh, the BIBF, uh, especially during these circumstances and all the changes that have been made. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, thank you, you so much. And we would like to thank you, dear viewers, for watching us. And we will see you next week in another episode of Inside Edition.